You may have heard of narcissistic abuse, but you're thinking, why does there need to be a syndrome for that? Well, on today's Ask a Shrink, let's look at narcissistic abuse syndrome. <laughs> Living with a narcissist or spending a lot of time with a narcissist can emotionally begin to wear somebody down. The person around the narcissist begins to become very aware of their flaws, their failures. What's wrong with me? They're feeling inferior. They're aware they have low self-esteem. Maybe they're having self-doubts, very little self-worth, and maybe even questioning their own sanity. Yes, all this can happen when somebody's spending a lot of time with or living with a narcissist. After a while, much like being gaslit, somebody may be questioning reality. Is this really happening to me? So the reason there's a syndrome for this is because the symptoms can mimic the seriousness of somebody who's dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder or somebody who's had a lot of childhood trauma in their life. The narcissist may be causing somebody to feel very isolated on their own, questioning the truth about things. What happens is that they begin to believe and carry the notion that the narcissist is the only person who really has my best interest in mind. They seem to know more than I do, so I'm gonna let them call the shots. Now this can all start because the narcissist takes on the role of the only person who can make me feel worthy. That's part of the manipulation that's been going on. Well, once you're relying on somebody who you believe deems you worthy, then of course self-doubt is going to grow, your self-esteem is going to lessen. With the self-doubt, you lose trust with your friends or family members because the only one you believe on some level you can trust is the narcissist. They deem you worthy. Without them deeming you, you don't feel worthy. That's part of the syndrome. And the syndrome includes making excuses for the narcissist's behavior letting them off the hook. If you start believing that you're really the one to blame for almost everything, especially if you're coupled with a narcissist or your best friend is a narcissist, then of course you're letting yourself be a victim of ridicule and you're allowing yourself to be devalued. So the narcissist doesn't really have this power. You're giving the person your power. That's why we have to view it this way. We have to flip it around because somebody in victim mentality like that will say, well, this is just my lot in life. This is the way it is. They seem to have all the power. They seem to know everything. No, not at all. This is where victim mentality takes over and you're forgetting you have your voice. You perhaps have completely lost your voice. The thing with narcissists to remember is that they're masters of disguise and manipulation. That's what they do. That's their thing. Especially somebody who has NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. That's not going anywhere. That's how they relate to life. So if you're around somebody who relates to life this way, then you've got to be ready to have really firm, healthy boundaries with toxic people like this. And the thing to remember, especially in a dating relationship, is that the abuse can start very, very slowly. You can't even really call it abuse necessarily uh, at the very beginning. But then it becomes a cycle and they pile it on more and more and more as they have you. So this can include name calling from the narcissist. They're putting you down in public ridiculing you, as I mentioned earlier. You have to remind yourself as a way to begin finding your voice that this is all oozing out of them because they feel very empty and lost and there's a lot of self-loathing inside. That's what narcissism is all about. The cover of the narcissism is to hide that the person feels so empty inside. So one way to begin working with it is to remind yourself that if somebody has narcissistic traits, it's simply a cover-up, that's all it is. It's like popping a balloon. There's only air in there and the air is gone like that and there's really nothing there of substance. Same thing with a narcissist. It's all huff and puff. Now, if you confront them about this, of course they're going to explode and cover up even more and they may be quick with their wit and good with their words. So don't expect that to go away, but it's more about the understanding for you to know what's really going on, the inner dynamics. They don't have any power, you have the power. Turn it around into yourself your own self-worth finds your voice and you begin putting up healthy boundaries. So anytime you're dating somebody or maybe a family member you're getting to know more, if there's a sense of grandiosity, if they seem to know everything, if there's little or no empathy within them, if they have a sense of entitlement and appear somewhat arrogant about everything, like it's my way or the highway, these are all big red flags. Pay attention to these flags. So the pattern of abuse from a narcissist over time is what causes the syndrome to develop. When you think of a syndrome, it's like when we're just caught in something, right? 
That's the image that comes to my mind. We're just enveloped in something and we can't get out of it. If they're really good at giving you the silent treatment, if they're projecting their feelings onto you and making you feel responsible for everything, if they're gaslighting you, or maybe they're giving you the stare. You know, that stare where somebody's seeing right through you. That can be very intimidating. And that can very well be a tactic that a narcissist will use. Another tactic to watch out for is they're good at triangulating things. The main thing to remember in a nutshell about triangulation is it's pulling in a third person some way or another. So if you feel like you're a victim to this, which you're really not, you're gonna find that out right now, you can develop your exit plan. Come up with an exit plan. You don't wanna spend the rest of your life like this, right? No way, get out of there. So one possible first step is remove or stop all contact. If you have to move away, move away. If you have to get a new cell phone number, get a new number, whatever you need to do. It's worth saving your sanity, I would think, isn't it? If it involves leaving a husband or wife, have a plan ready in terms of a bag packed, ready to go if you need it, a location already worked out, a good friend that you figured out how you can manage this together, some money put away for yourself when you need it, when you're out. Yes, you may have to be in contact to a degree, but keep it very minimal, just small talk. Don't divulge anything. Block them on social media, but if they find a way to track you down, then stop all social media. You have to do what you need to do for yourself to reclaim your life. Sometimes, especially initially, that may seem like difficult steps, but if it means starting a new life, turning a new leaf, finding out what you're all about and getting away from this type of abuse, then it's going to be very well worth it. Then the momentum is now with you towards your new life. You have to get the momentum going one way or the other. Love to hear any feedback you have about this topic. Please feel free to comment below. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.